How much time, how long were you in that area? Mm, it was like four months. Um, but what ended up happening was, um, uh, I think it was like, yeah, three or four months. I left in, would have been late December, late December of 2017. Um, and I know this specifically because, so I had a, I had a girlfriend who was in uh, Bulgaria at the time. She was a Fulbright scholar in Bulgaria. Mm. Now I was trying to leave the, I, I wanted to leave the country to go, um, to go see her, uh, for Christmas and New Year's and, uh, Iraq had shut down the airspace. So I couldn't fly out of, uh, the Kurdish region at this point, um, but I could take a bus to the first border town on the other side of um, uh, of Iraqi Kurdistan and Turkey and then just fly from there. So that was my plan. Crossed out of the country that way. Uh, got a Turkish visa because uh, you can get it on arrival. Flew to, um, uh, I guess it was Istanbul and then to see her in Bulgaria. Hung out for a couple of days, had Christmas. Then we were like, well, let's go meet my friend in, in Istanbul and, and, you know, hang out for, for New Year's. So we were planning on doing New Year's in Istanbul. So this Istanbul would be seems like such a cool city. Man. One of my favorite cities in the world. It's a city that connects Europe and Asia, right? It's so cool. I love that city. Mm -hmm. It's it's one of the mo one of the most beautiful places. Um, and it also ha it's like it's not beautiful in the same way that like Vienna is beautiful, where it's it's like you're walking through a museum. It's beautiful because it's like got this soaring architecture but it's also super deeply human like you mm. you feel it feels lived in it feels like human beings are are having their lives and making their stories in this city and have for thousands of years it's so cool um so we decided to go to istanbul, istanbul and uh there's a train that goes from sofia to istanbul it's an overnight train and uh we get a sleeper car Woken up at, uh, you know, three o'clock in the morning for the uh, border check for the, the passport thing. And uh, really cold on the border because, uh, you know, it's it's uh, late December and guys are checking our passports. We both have Turkish visas because we had been been through there and uh, border guards are like, OK, well, where do you live? Uh, my girlfriend at the time said Bulgaria and, um, then a guy asked me where I lived and it's three o'clock in the morning. I don't like, and I say three syllables that like changed my life entirely. I live in Kurdistan, Kurdistan. And then the Turkish border guards are like, where do you live? And I was like, oh no, because the Turks are not cool with any sort of independent independence movement from Kurdistan. Yeah, because that's not a recognized you know, mm -mm. shit. So I said the name of a country that doesn't exist. And mind you, at this point, the book is supposed to just be about what it's like to be in this country that didn't exist previously and now exists, for better or worse. Granted, it didn't, like, the, the referendum didn't lead to an independent Kurdish state. But that was what this book was about. And so the, uh, the Turkish authorities say, okay, well, um, you're coming, coming with, with us. us. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we, we both go to get interrogated in separate rooms. Oh, uh, no. And uh, I, uh, I'm having a really interesting interrogation with my, my – you know, Turkish border patrol officer, because like it's he's it's, he's like both good cop and bad cop at the same time. So it's like really confusing cop. So we'll be kind of buddy buddy. And I think that like he's going to be like, oh, this is all just like some crazy mix up. Don't worry about it. And, you know, you, of course, you guys have a great time in Istanbul. Um, and then, you know, I'd sit back and like cross my leg and he like swap me in the legs and be like, sit up straight. And I was like, holy shit, like what, what's happening? And so, of course. I mean, as you well know, like my fact pattern looks a little strange. Like <laughs> I've got, I have Kurdish work papers, I have an American passport, um, and I have an ID for as a third grade teacher. Um, and I'm also going to grad school at the time, so so my and I went to went to Oxford, so I have my like Oxford ID. And so like those are my personal effects. That ha and he's like, make these all make sense together. I'm like, the, I'm, you know, my thesis project is writing a book about unrecognized nations. That's why I'm here. I'm teaching third grade. And he's like, so you're a spy. You crossed over the border from, you know, the area that's sort of uh, filled with with uh, the, the Kurdish <laughs> Workers Party. Why would you cross over that border? I'm like, I can't because I can't, the, you know, 
the airspace is shut down. I can't fly out of Iraqi Kurdistan. And then he takes out my camera. And I had just been at a rally for Kurdish independence. Oh, no. And I did not take that memory card out. And I had probably 400 photos of just nothing but hyper Kurdish nationalism. And so he's just flipping through all of them. And I'm like, I am so to prison. fucked right yeah. now. For whatever reason, and thank God he didn't, he decided that that they were just going to boot us out. And so they, we received, And you were already leaving. Uh, yeah. Well, we were going to go to to Istanbul, but at this point we weren't. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. So, uh, it, you know, they, they give us some paperwork that says you're banned from Turkey. Um, oh, so you can't go back to Turkey. And that meant I couldn't go back to Iraqi Kurdistan either because the airspace was shut. So now I'm just on the border of, uh, you know, Turkey and Bulgaria. It's three o'clock in the morning. And they're like, walk to the next town, which is a town called Svilingrad. And I'm like, what the fuck are we going to do? And uh, fortunately, there was, a, there was a cab that was coming through the border for one of the hotels at one time. And he, he saw that we were in dire straits. And he, he was like, uh, yeah, get on, get in. We'll, we'll take you to Svilingrad. And How'd you, did, you couldn't get back at all then? I would have. To it, Kurdistan. Nope. I had to say goodbye to everything there. You never went back. Nope. Lost my job, lost my apartment, lost all my clothes, lost. I, I only had money in my boot. You couldn't get anything mailed back? No. No. I, it was, it was all done. Listen to me, the Mr. American here, thinking <laughs> I can just FedEx everything. Christ. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, nobody. And also nobody from the school is going to be like, man, yeah. Rough, rough time, Eric had. Let's let's FedEx him his uh, his his clothes. Where'd you keep your money? In my boot. I usually keep it in my boot. So yeah. All right. So you had that with you? Yeah, I I walked out. Well, because I knew that there was a possibility <clears throat> that so you kept cash in your boot. Yes, they paid me in cash in in Erbil. How much cash did you have in American U.S. dollars? Maybe two, three grand, something like that. That's not a lot. No, I know. I know. And it's certainly not enough to fund the rest of my travel. Thank you for watching the video, guys. Please hit that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below.